Welcome to a new Facebook Live. Wes Moss here, and I would say it's a Friday, almost around afternoon, and it's raining here in Georgia, and we're testing out our new Mevo camera. Is everything working, Mallory? Yeah, I, I want to talk about creative destruction. Amazon is destroying jobs in the most important industry in America. It's the food industry, but there also may be job creation when it's all said and done. So you have this creative destruction happening. And this, of course, is all from the Amazon Whole Foods merger that's that's happening that we've all heard about. We're all worried about what does it do to my local grocery store? What does it do to Publix and Kroger and all the stores that we love to shop at? And Whole Foods, of course. Um, so there's been a lot of angst in that industry. And I want to kind of under, help us understand what these giant changes could really be looking like over the next decade or so. And this really applies to everybody. It's not just about grocery jobs. It's about all jobs. They get impacted by technology. And we go through this process of what's called creative destruction, meaning that we destroy jobs because technology takes them away. And then we add jobs back because there are new industries that pop up. Uh, and, and in order to serve the entire industry as a whole. So let's go through this today, and I'm going to actually draw out some of these numbers. First, I want to talk about um, the, we, I've thought a lot about this industry and what's happening post Amazon Whole Foods merger. Again, what's the worry? The worry is now that you can deliver all of your groceries from Whole Foods, that the need for the traditional grocery store gets lower and lower and lower, ultimately one day it goes away and everything gets delivered. We're a long way away from that. But let's assume that we get about a 20% penetration in the industry, which effectively says today, and this is from a Nielsen study, relatively, re this is a recent Nielsen study, about 4% of our groceries get delivered today. There are companies like Instacart, Shipt, and of course you probably heard of Uber Eats and Zifty, those deliver uh, restaurant meals, but places like Instacart and Shipt are there to deliver just normal grocery deliveries that you and I go shopping every week. Hamburgers, dinosaur chicken in my family, beef jerky, kale, bananas, peaches, apples, you name it, it comes to the door in on-demand grocery delivery, which is now very much an option. There's lots of companies that do this out there, not just Amazon getting into the game. So. My thought here is that I want to, want to talk about a quick experience, and this is partially how I got these numbers if we peer into the future. I, I, I've known about on-demand grocery delivery for a long time. I've used Zifty and Uber Eats a, a fair amount uh, in the last couple of years, but haven't had a huge amount of, uh, I haven't used or relied that heavily on, on in, the Instacarts of the world or the shipped S-H-I-P-T, the ships of the world. So I, I've done a few order deliveries and they've, oh, they've always worked out really well. We're a busy family, four kids, and we're always trying to figure out a time to go to the grocery store. And a lot of times it'll take an hour to two hours to get everything, to go shop, come back. So it, it was really interesting. I wanted to put, put a full family grocery menu to the test. And I did it a couple of weeks ago with a company called Shipped. They're out of, uh, I want to say, Al Birmingham, Alabama, a, a venture-funded delivery grocery delivery firm. They've raised over $60 million to get this company up and running, and it works incredibly well. I did a full-scale uh, weekly Moss Family grocery menu, you know, 80-some items, anywhere from uh, hamburger meat and, and processed chicken. Let's say, let's go, my kids eat these things called dinosaur nuggets all the way to kale and peaches and apples that need to be handled and not bruised and picked out. And it took a real life person through a company called Shipped. Her name was Raina. And she just did an awesome job. It, it, I, I delivered, I did everything on the, the Shipped app. It took about 12 minutes to go through. And this is my first time. Now I can go back and reorder the same thing. A lot of the same things we order over and over again, like peanut butter, jelly, bread, hamburger meat, all on the list. I could now probably do the order in about two minutes because I can just reorder everything. So this was my initial order, pretty amazing. You can also scan things that are in your pantry so that you, you have the exact thing that's going right back into your shopping cart. Anyway, within two hours, it was all delivered. And it was, it was, done, in a really, it, it was done in a really professional way. The, the, Raina, the delivery girl, was really excited about it. She says she loves to shop, got everything perfectly done and you know we spent a full 290 dollars at, at Publix which 
is a big grocery shop for us, but that's food for a week with a, a, fat, a, a big growing family, all boys swimming, very hungry. So the, the grocery delivery industry works. It works really well. And I can see that in uh, 10 years or so, we could all embrace this, not all, we could have 20% adoption of this. So here's what it would mean for jobs. Let's go through this destruction process. I'm going to hold these numbers up, but there are about 2.7 million grocery store jobs. So clerks, cashiers, uh, people that stock the food, executives, managers, produce, butcher, you name it. And let's assume that we have 20% of food now that just gets delivered. You're going to redu reduce the need for square footage in stores. So let's say, let's subtract 15% of lost jobs as these stores shrink. What does that equal? That, that's about 400,000 jobs that are destroyed because of a shrinking store footprint. 400,000 jobs could potentially go away. Now let's say that because there are about 750 cashiers uh, in the grocery industry, let's reduce that number by another 40% which would mean another lost 300,000 jobs. So for a total of minus 700,000 jobs that go away in this new world of technology. Pretty remarkable amount here. But now let's look at the potential for to add jobs back because we have a new way of doing things. And I'll put this out of the way. I don't know if that I put it out of the way, but that works. I feel like a on-demand professor here. I like this. So now let's talk about, because Raina, uh, this is a human being that had to go to the store, pick out things that are expensive and we want it to be done right, delivered it right. Robot is not able to do that, at least in the next century from what I can tell. Uh, if we get this 20% adoption, now we get 20% times 120 million households in America that start using services like Instacart and Shipt. Well, that means that we are going to need a bunch of new jobs. That's 24 million households. Uh, Raina can deliver about 40 of those meals per week. And if we did it every single week, how many people would, how many Raina's or personal delivery shopper, uh, shoppers would we need to service 24 million households in America? Well, the answer is about 600,000 new jobs that would be part of this new on-demand grocery shopping industry. So we add back 600,000 jobs. Well, we've also shrunk these stores, right? Well, we're still going to consume the same amount of food. We still need to eat. So now instead of having 100 Kroger's, let's say maybe there's 80 Kroger's or smaller Kroger's, but we have to add back some warehouse. I call these hub grocery stores that we're already starting to see, they're gonna be the new scaled down version of stores that delivery folks can go to, maybe not even have to check out, not have to wade through a whole bunch of different options. They only have like the most, let's say, popular items to get ordered. That These are grocery hubs. Well, we've lost all of these grocery folks, 700,000. We're gonna at least need to add back half of those to service the hubs. So half of the 700 lost equals another plus 350k. We add 350 and 600. We're going to add back potentially 950,000 jobs, almost a million jobs. Again, there's an awful lot that's going to happen. We can't predict the future, but this is the process of creative destruction. Uh, and this is the creative part of that. So we lose 700,000. We gain back 950,000. That's a quarter of a million, million, double M, let's say, new jobs. Or sounds a little better if we say 250,000 new jobs, net, 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 from this new industry. And this is the process of destruction then helped out by light at the end of the tunnel uh, creation. And, and this happens with technology. An example of this, you go from 1995 to 2010, there was this big worry that ATM machines are going to put folks out of business. Now, ATMs have been around since the mid-70s, but what happened? So we went from 100,000 ATMs to 400,000 ATMs in that 95 to 2010 span. Uh, 2010 span. 
there was big there was lots of talk that that tellers bank tellers would go away because ATMs would replace them. Instead, we went from 500,000 tellers to 550,000 tellers even though ATMs went from 100 to 400. So, we actually added jobs even though we added this automated version of a teller. It's because tellers went from just processing checks to being relationship managers. Branches had more money to to spend because they they had this automation with ATMs and they were able to actually hire more people with what they call higher value, more service oriented jobs. So this was a, this is a great example. The ATM example to me is a great example of uh, no, really no destruction. It was actually full creation, even though we added in a new technology. That could happen or could not happen with the grocery industry. But I wanted to try to give us an idea of just the the, the rapid change, the light, the the, the world and the economy is changing at the speed of light literally because data can travel effectively at the speed of light. And that's why we see so many of these new industries popping up uh, and, and the evolution of uh, dramatic evolution of these industries. And that's, and that's a big theme for investors. And that's why I want to continue to talk about it on Money Matters Facebook Live, Money Matters on WSB Radio. You can find me and the Money Matters team as usual at westmoss.com, W-E-S. M-O-S-S dot com. Contact button up the right hand corner. Emails come straight to me and the team. And thank you so much. Uh, happy July 4th, Independence Day coming up, obviously, next Tuesday. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy the weekend. Have a safe, wonderful week.